it out and you could win the team fights in with your immobil mobility alone. And with that, it's clear. The image for a BTR, their programming in this game, is to overload on damage. It's, it's as clean a pickoff as it gets, but wait, are you gonna get it? This way, Super Vin, just crossing casually like a walk in the park across three members of Onyx this early on. Classic Vin. Did this when he was at RRQ, now in Bigatron Alpha, it's still the same Finn, just with a super in front of his name. Uh -oh. But this time, it's gonna be punished, forced to flicker out. Oh, the wall almost catching him off angle. All right. Fortunate for all the Bigot Troopers watching is, uh, your man's Vin here is actually rocking a, uh, pull yourself together. So yeah, it's not gonna be as hard to punish. Looking at the emblems once more. This is Ooh. the first time, if I'm not mistaken, we're seeing Alilia, at least in a while. Yeah. At least post-patch. And here is what Moreno brings via his uh, emblem suite. Lethal Ignition. First time in the Challenge Finals, I think. Uh, I don't think I remember seeing it in the group stages, and especially in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. So we'll see how it works out. Against the Faramis, like Lufel said, it isn't a bad matchup per se, but it is a very difficult matchup to pull off against Uranus coming down now on the Super Can, forcing a retribution. Up against the some damage right now as he collapsed onto Boots. Shadow Kill used up Boots! No, oh, doesn't fall! Oh, oh, oh. Super Can forced back and Boots just gets out with a sprint. Short. Just one more basic attack, one more prop would have done it. Now Vin in trouble, but lives to tell the tale. A lot of close calls here, approaching the two minute mark. First turtle spawning in just a few more seconds. How about we talk about this gold lane matchup? This is more of a classic compared to what happened last game. It's the Beatrix versus the Claude. Yeah, but in the other matchup, I would say 1-1 one, one versus Claude, it's mostly just a farming battle. But for this lane, I do believe Sokken will have a little bit more to say when it comes down to these trades, but it's CW with a better clear, obviously, on this Beatrix. Let's take a look here. Divine Judgment coming down on Boots. Oh, Keyboy already uses his wild charge. Sokken puts up two shadows. Quan Shadow coming in as well. Super Ken goes to the Rectory, but Kyrie takes it. Shadow Stampede bringing him back. It's first blood over to Onyx, and it's two for Kyrie. The one gets two early on after Turtle score. Two and a half minutes in. Onyx will snowball. Man. 1.7k gold lead in two minutes. If you thought game one was fast, Onik are trying to speed run Bigatron Alpha. How's this for BBE? Big boss energy. They're literally just walking in to your jungle and Sans crossing the river and saying, recall. Uh, that's the sound effect. Oh, hey. Sans recalling. If you oh. do Keyboy and Sans, right? Recalling at the same time, it creates so much of a distraction. And I think Bigatron Alpha, no. Everyone who faces them really understands that SCW waiting on that BMI. <laughs> there seems to be some physics involved, quantum physics involved that yeah. gravitate you towards them. When you see them recalling, especially in sync, you're like, I gotta give something to these guys. I can't let them do this for free. Gotta punish them, gotta try to punch them, do, do something. You can't just let them do that. And it always fights them back, right? Every single team who gets distracted by those recalls has been punished. Now Kyrie down below. Sakran's actually forcing this out, but Kyrie's done it enough to stone him away. Now Keyboy is oh. pinching them down in the bush. And that's all the turret shield taken by CW and Kyrie. That's so much bank for Calvin Winata and the rest of Onik that was present at the siege of that tier one, taking away all the shields. Almost instantly that put him. Mirko, 600 gold ahead of Sakran. This is not a normal 600 gold lead. When a Beatrix has a lead like this up against a Claude, you can expect the Claude to just completely get bullied. Here as well, Sokken not going for the Steel Leg Plates, going for the Warrior Boots instead. Needs that mobility, has the Brave Smite, and he thinks that the Brave Smite is going to get him through lane. Yes, but when it comes down to the burst here, one Bennett's Rage might take him out. Now, Turtle spawns once more, approaching half its health. Keyboy and Kyrie put him up perimeter as CW chunks away. Retribution, another score, free for Onik. Clean game, clinical performance by Onik. Game one, and now even cleaner in game two. This time, they're not even giving anything away to Bigatron Alpha. The turtle was still back and forth in game number one. Bigatron, heck, they even were able to secure more, but Onik's Oppression across the map is very, very visible here in the item builds. Yep, you'll see here that 
Saken is holding on. Man, that gold lead is already ballooned up to 800. Blade is fair already on CW. And huge, huge, a thousand and change up on Kyrie. It looks like they want more. Kyrie can pop this dance. He can get the rhythm and beats anytime he wants. Oh, but the turret still stands and CW takes it. Renner, basic attack, takes the turret out. Now the Renner's apathy as well, used up to try to clear the wave. Saken and the rest of the Eternal Alpha forced to move into this mid lane to start grouping up maybe to look for a cheeky pick. As we leave the laning phase, approaching the six minute mark, turtle up in just under a minute. I'm wondering, Mirko, BTR, game one, it was clear. They just wanted to scale out of their minds, right? Take it to 20, 25 minutes. Here, what's BTR looking for? They want to burst out, pick off. Will they get on Boots? Divine Judgment, Quad Shadow, everything used up. Boots will fall. It's a kill over to Bigatron Alpha. A very expensive kill, though. Two ultimates, one battle spell, make it two with Super Ken's Red Tree. Shock and so awe. Oh. Super Ken gets punished by Kyrie! Solo kill up top. Super Ken didn't have the quad shadows, gets completely punished for it. Kyrie, if you're up against Kyrie on a Hayabusa yourself, man, Kyrie is a Hayabusa user. He understands that hero. He's in your head. He is. Talk about 1v1 with the great oh. one. And now they commit Grand Theft Purple. Kyrie just done stop. Free purple buff. And now Onyx, they choose to go straight for the turtle and they don't. They pace themselves. They understand there's no real reason to force these objectives. They have the game under control. Yep. They can utilize that lead instead of rushing to objectives. Art takes time. And here they are painting a picture wherein BTR can't clap back. Seven minutes in, Keyboy with the pull. Kyrie just picked up his holy crystal, and Bigatron Alpha are moving as a unit. That one kill they scored about a few moments ago was done via this rotation. Now there's a pull! Call Alter, though, with a wild charge on the three from Keyboy! Kyrie on the back! Wipes them down, Supercat now with Quad Shadow and the Shadow Kill on the Keyboy. Getting a few damage done, but Sans takes them out! Traded for Keyboy! Kyrie hunting for more. Current tally, three for one. The casualties are through the roof. Onik are ballooning on forward, approaching the 5,000 gold lead. And with enough time to actually go for the turtle. My goodness, let's take a look at the instant replay. That happened so quick. I thought Super Ken was taken out there, but he was able to Quan Shadow back out and in again to at least find one kill on the board. But man, it was still just absolute value for Onik. And with that, all big wins so far, going for Onik. And but what a simple trade up top and in mid. A huge gank up top, yes. Bigger troopers, count your blessings. But right now, it's looking dire. It is a dark and cloudy day for the red robots as they struggle to give Super Ken his purple. It seems like throughout SBS Challenge Finals playoffs, the world just doesn't want to see Mirko do the call dog. But Onik really wants to see the call dog, man. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing your hips are shaking, man. It's close, it's close, especially with Onik here. One game up on their way to a 2-0. Eight minutes and a half in. Now they're going to deprive Superken of his orange. I wonder what the play is down bottom. Besides taking the tier one turret, what else can this map presence up top do? Shadow kill already spent. Oh, and that's a very expensive shadow. Oh, what, what happened down below? With the Divine Judgment bin and Saken falls off cam to Kyrie and Sans. That was a tag team match. Y'all didn't want to miss player. So our production team put up a little camera there to explain what just happened. And yeah, no, wow. I think that's just a clear picture of what this gold lead is doing. They were outgunned and it seemed like they were outmanned. Even if it was a fair 2v2, there just wasn't enough on the board for Vin and Saken to take on Kyrie and Sans. The analysts were talking about how maybe Bigatron Alpha could try to bank on the early game or Renner's apathy. Taking Moreno low. But now that Bigatron Alpha have banked more into the early game, it seems like they're just playing into Onyx game. Mm -hmm. Onyx wants you to play in and get reeled in by the control chaos that is their game plan. And Bigatron Alpha, game number two, they took it. They, 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 they bit down on the bait. They, they, they followed. They said, hey, we got candy over here. Okay, mister, let's get some candy. And that's what this 10 minute mark is looking like. That's what this first Lord 
teams like for Onik, they are light years ahead of Bigatron Alpha in terms of economy. We're looking for the snap. We're looking for the comeback. Where could it come from? Maybe off of a pickoff, maybe off of a punish. I'd say it's inside the base. I mean, we've seen comebacks like that happen in the playoffs, inside the base. But with, oh, with Kyrie picking up his blood wings, CW on his wind of nature, Onik are closing up all the gaps. They really are. Taking a look at the gold lead, man, for just the cold laner, CW and Sakan. Two levels up for CW. And it's 2,000 gold that he has over Sakan. The whole item. BOD, Melfic Roar, now Wind of Nature. At this point, he can just go for complete the Blade of Heptasis. You were doing that much damage to Moreno with just one Reiner's Apathy without Heptasis. With Heptasis, that might be a one shot, Leo. Yep, you pop him. And if not, you send him home. All the more you can make whatever you want work. A siege, a push, a wipeout. If Bigatron Alpha don't respect that here, even within their base, it's over. 11 minutes in, Lord marching through. Conceal play by Keyboy. Torizo trying to look for an opening in this team fight. So we can up top, trying to clear the waves. Keyboy taken to a quarter of his HP. Bottom lane still cleared out, and Bigatron Alpha utilizing these base turret passive are still able to clear out the wave that has hit their base. Great defense by BTR, definitely. Something that they can rely on. Their waves, clear speed, and wait. Oh, they're coming in. They don't want to end it just like that. Onik wants a successful siege. Boots, oh my god, he missed some strike. Connects with a flicker. Woo. But Boots just takes it like an absolute Chad. A giga Chad. Now they're going to go ahead and see what else they can find. Super Vin almost got deserted, almost got cornered. Triangle offense almost laid down upon him, and he now retreats. Purple buff, you're gonna get stolen away. CW scores. Man, 12 minutes in. Lord coming no! up. Oh, wait! What the boy! Four man wild charge! Into the rhythm and without minions. In a Renner's apathy. That should be a base turret. CW snipes it down without minions, Leo. I was trying to explain something, Keyboy, and he says, Nah, fam, watch this. Shut up, Leo. He basically said that in the most, in the politest way possible. I, He's I, a polite man. I accept, I accept. Keyboy and I were good. But wow! Not just to pick off on Ken, but a take on that mid lane inhibitor. Now bottom as well. Gonna go, Boots! Oh, if he survives that, man, would have been crazy. CW was looking to try to predict where the BMI was. Sans Kyrie and CW. 3v1. Oh my god, Moreno! What? Deleted off of the face of the Land of Dawn. Huge damage coming in from Kyrie. And again, this is a good lineup to actually time out the black shoes, to time out whatever iframes or mobility spells Bigatron Alpha have. They not only fear the wild charge, they fear the pull from the Faramis. They fear Kyrie just sitting in a random bush ready to pop them. They fear the render shots. They fear everything, and it's. It's clear, it's clear why 3.36k gold lead over the gold laners, DHS, and final item, I'm just waiting to see what the Fury Hammer goes to. I have to seize Hunter Strike, he doesn't even need to go for the Haas Claws, usually you see Haas Claws, but now CW has one thing in mind, to melt these members down. Here we go, they're going to hunt, and Keyboy with the conceal, oh, big turn Alpha, they smell Shenan's, they go for the recall. And Onik, they're biding their time. Oh, oh. Sans doesn't spot them, they make it home. Almost catches them though, man. I mean, my goodness, what are Bigger Turn Alpha supposed to do? Just seems like it's Onik's game. Onik are forcing them to do everything. Go back to base. Yes, sir. All right, now defend. Okay, there's a Lord coming in. Protect your inhibitor. All right. And now the defense of a lifetime. Game two here, up for Onyx to take. Lord gets melted down. Bigot turn off, still breathing. We're just going up top. Teresa finds one. Bigotron Alpha, still here. That was good damage on the Sans. I think that's what started this defense. But again, these team fights, oh, Supercan jumping in, trying to bait out the wild charge. Keyboys still holding on to it. One basic attack with the Renner. Takes Teresa to half. Renner's apathy, no! Oh! and Force back. Base wide open, Sorizo jumping in now, not using the Mism Strike just yet. Well, I'll charge connecting only on Super Vin right now. The Lazy Duet gets popped. Overloaded on damage. Bigger now have to back out. They time out the Cult Altar, and they're still here. Still defendable. Bigger Alpha. 
They lose another base turret, but that's about it. You can see from the Lord Advantage, only 600 gold for Onik. Look at the damage that Moreno is putting out. Wow, a thousand and change ahead of Kyrie. And Kyrie's sitting at five and oh. That just paints a picture of how well, oh wait, they broke it out. A base of strike used up, a boots just stands there once again like a Chad Sans emoting. The Onik logo comes in as Cerezo gets taken out by Kyrie. With a man down, Bigatron Alpha can't defend the way they used to. With a man down, the end seems ever more inevitable. Boots coming in, they're clearing the waves. Kyrie taking the orange here. This could be it. I think Onyx smelled blood in the water. Oh, Moreno already forced to use the black shoes. Kyrie diving deep into the base. Rhythm popped in. Super Ken. Last squad. Yeah! Rager's apathy! CW! He's down. Three defenders left, and the rest of Onik are here. All five men called Alter! Super Vin jumping in, blazing to wet everything used! But Onik, they stay targeted! CW with a double kill! 2-0! Onik! 